Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our Crosby house. This is one of three all new houses based on, well, I guess inspired by the uh, old vintage putts houses. And um, we were gonna make them about the size of your standard putts house, but uh, just didn't leave much room for detail. So we increased them a little bit, uh, but they're still kind of dainty and cute. Uh, but definitely a good size. So this is uh, my third one today. And we're gonna start off by cutting out the foam core base for the base. It's gonna go inside of the little base that we're gonna create that our house is gonna live on. So what I'm doing here is just taking this template. And you'll notice that this template has a little hole in it too. I'm gonna draw that circle out because we created a little light post for the structure or for the front yard, I guess you can call it. And that's gonna be important. So you're gonna need two of these. I guess it depends on the thickness of your, um, thickness of your foam core. We've got all that information in the supply list. So just make sure that you have the correct size. And I'm just gonna cut this right along that line that we just drew. And I'm cutting out two at a time here, as you can probably tell. And some days I wish I had a bigger table. I'll just cut them out. I've got a super sharp DeWalt box cutter. I can use an X-Acto knife. This thing seems to, oops, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to draw the other hole. Don't forget to do that. And where the heck did my pen go? There it is the little light post. We're gonna kind of jam that into this little hole here. That's gonna help hold it in place and keep it nice and sturdy for us. We're using a dowel for the base of it, which uh, I painted black. And then we actually made the little lamp out of paper. So for this here, what I did was I just, on one of them, I just cut a little X into it. Okay. And I took the dowel, just kind of shoved it in there and just Pop it through, just to make sure that it goes through. Don't have to cut away that whole thing. Okay, it'll work just fine. Do the same thing there, just like that. And just kind of shove that right through. There we go, and that's good enough. Okay, so I, um, I think on the first one, I, I'm pretty sure I glued them together. I may have not, but you should. Just glue these two together, make sure the holes are aligned. Okay, and just to check your work, just make sure it goes through. Okay, and that's gonna come into play here momentarily. Here is the base. We're gonna start with the base. And that's our top, you can see, we've got the hole cut out there too. And what we're gonna do is begin just by simply gluing these little triangular tabs to the neighboring walls. So just apply your glue to that tab, bring it over, tuck it behind the neighboring wall and just press and hold. Okay, give that a few seconds. I probably should have washed my hands. I've built two of these houses today and um, I've got glue all over my fingers. So hopefully that doesn't impede my ability to do the job here. We'll grab the other or triangular tab, apply some glue bring it over, connect it to the neighboring wall. And I'll preface this video as I did the last two by telling you that if you wanna go easy on the glue, otherwise you're gonna be watching paint dry or watching glue dry, less is more. And unless I tell you otherwise, I'm gonna to try to keep it pretty thin, almost thin enough to where you can still sort of see the texture of the paper through the glue. Not exactly, but kind of. Okay, just a nice thin amount of glue on everything you do. Okay, last triangular tab. Bring that in, tuck it behind the neighboring wall, press and hold, and give that a few seconds to set. That's all it should really take. It's not completely dry, but it's enough to where we can move on and continue working. Okay, so very gently, let's lift these tabs up and out of the way. I'm gonna match up the hole with the hole on the base and stick this in there. Okay, just let it drop in there, don't force it. There we 
go, almost there. I think I'm getting craft fatigue here. I'm trying to get this out for everybody, and sometimes the craft all day, which I don't mind. I mean, it's really relaxing. But anyway, okay, so next we're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna put glue on one of the sides and anchor it, one of the longer sides preferably. You could do it on the shorter side. I think it's easier to do it on the longer side. And we'll take this piece and get that nice and centered right out to the very edge of that little section. Make sure, again, it's nice and centered. Press that down and we have that foam core there to help us really make sure that entire tab makes contact with this piece, which is wonderful. Don't always have that advantage. Okay, now we can pull that back and we're going to apply glue to the remaining three tabs like so. And we'll spread that glue out to the very edge so we get a nice clean seam on our base all the way out to the edge. There we go. Spread that out, beautiful. Now we're gonna close this up and just make sure that you focus on this side first, the side opposite of the side that is already hinged. Get that all the way out to the very edge and then you may need to take and kind of nudge in the side walls a little bit. Okay, make sure you get all three sides in place and just continue running your fingers along the perimeter to make sure it's making good contact throughout. This is gonna be the bottom, so no one's really gonna see it, but I still wanna make sure we do a good job. And this will kinda of get our feet wet a little bit for the remainder of the assembly. I did a little bit of pre-prep in this video just so that we can avoid uh, extended video times and monotonous tasks. But I'll be sure to go over everything, and when I tell you, you can pause me and just get your, get your things done. Okay, so there's our base, and we do have a little fence that goes around it. Okay, it's made up of these pieces here. And you'll notice that on one side, let me see if I can find which side it is. Okay, nevertheless, this is the front. You got the little hole here. This piece is gonna go like this. Okay, and then this little guy here, I think he's got some score marks that I'm missing. Oh no, there it is. Yep, this little guy's gonna go here. So we've got just a tiny bit of fence on the front left, a little, uh, a lot more fence on the front right, and then the back does not have any folds, it just goes on flush, like straight. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this piece here, and because there's a gap here at the bottom, what you're gonna need to do is avoid putting glue on the entire surface of the base. We're just gonna put little dots on each of these at the bottom. Okay, we can actually stop here at the fold. Okay, and this is gonna go right here, like so. Just make sure that you match that up where the score lines are. And I'm using my table just to kind of guide me here. As long as it's sitting flat on the table and it matches up with the little folds here and here, you know you're in good shape. Okay, so just press those down. They should be flush with the base. You're gonna do the same thing with this one here. Now remember this one has a smaller fence. Okay, so I'm gonna fix this one, or just affix it, not fix it, affix it. And that's gonna go right there like so. Again, just make sure it's flush with the bottom, like so. And then you can pull this back and we'll apply glue to these little guys here. And again, just using my table as kind of a, a helper. You can push down here. As long as it's making contact with the table, you know that it's gonna be flush. Okay, and there is your little fence. Now we do have these two little posts here. We'll just do a dot there, fold that over onto the back press and hold that down, let that set. We'll do the same thing on this side. Peel that back. One little dot there. 
fold it over onto the back of our base and press and hold. And then finally, we'll just situate this like this. You got this piece here and that's going to go right on the back and it should cover up those two on either ends. Okay, so for these last two on the ends, you can actually put glue on the entire piece. And then let's just do little dots for the rest of them. Just make sure that these are on the bottom. Okay. So let's match up those posts on both sides. Should be pretty spot on. And then of course, make sure that it is nice and flush with the bottom and kind of push down a little bit if necessary. There we go. Okay. So there is the completed base, almost. We also have this cute little walkway that I inked and embossed. And there's a short little section that's gonna go on the face here on the front. And then the long pathway is gonna go on this surface. You'll notice that there are two little score marks there. And that's to help you with the positioning of this piece so that we have it in the right spot. Okay. And that's gonna go right in between those little score marks with that small little bit right on the front of the surface of the base like that. Okay, all right, so that's that. <clears throat> Put that off to the side. Just to kind of make it and give it the illusion of it glowing, we did include little pieces of vellum to put inside there. So we wanna put those in before we actually construct this. Now you're gonna repeat this twice, obviously, since there are two. And it is a small little piece, but it adds a nice little touch to it. So just pop a little bit of glue right on the inside, press that down into place to help that. And you can see how nice that looks. It almost looks like it's glowing without actually having to put a light in there. Um, I didn't have time to research, mostly because, well, I guess I had time. I just didn't do the research to see if there was something we can put in there because I, I can't imagine anybody's created a single little light that would fit inside of a area this small. Uh, maybe if you're ambitious, what you can do is take some fairy lights and maybe just pop one of them in there somehow uh, and then you kind of wrap the rest of them around the post. That could look cool, uh, but I'm, I'm afraid that there's probably not gonna be a way to light this up, but that's okay. Now, what you could do technically, um, if you're familiar with Limax or Department 56, those are two companies that make those little ceramic villages. Um, I know that they have little lights that are made of plastic, and maybe you could incorporate those into the design instead of these. That's if you wanna do that, but not necessary. Oops. My fingers were kind of sticky there. There we go. Okay, so we've got the we've got the vellum in place, and now what we're going to do is there's a, a small little tab here on one of the ends. We'll just throw a few little drops of glue on there, and then you can actually do this flat. So just fold that over and lay it down flat, and then take the other end and just go ahead and connect it right at that seam and press that down. It should fold completely flat, then you can pop it back out and now you have the little lamp created there. Let's move that lid out of the way, bring the three tabs in and apply some glue to the three tabs up on top. We're gonna to close up the top. You can spread that out with your finger just to make sure it's got coverage throughout. Then go ahead and pop that top in place. You might need to kind of nudge the walls in a little bit, that's fine. And then press that down or put that down on your surface and then you can take a little dowel and press down on the tabs from the inside just to lock that in place and make sure that everything's making good solid contact so it doesn't come apart on you, okay? And then finally, we've got three more little tabs on the bottom and We'll throw a little bit of glue on there. This is probably, it's probably like the only little tedious piece in this project. And again, if you don't wanna make it, you don't have to, especially if you're considering 
using like a plastic version that actually lights up. That's kind of cool, but that's <laughs> pretty cool what you can do in miniature. And I know I have a, a lot of fans that love to make little miniature versions of things. So this will be a fun little uh, exercise for you. And next we have this little, um, well, the little roof piece to the lamp. You'll notice that there's a little tab on one of the ends here. And we're gonna apply glue, whoops, wow. That really rushed out to the tab. And since I've got so much on there, I'm just gonna spread that out with my finger. I don't need to apply any more. Pop that right underneath its neighbor. Make sure it's lined up nicely and press and hold. So you're basically creating kind of like a little pyramid. There we go. And then finally, we'll take the three tabs, push them in like so. You can see the three there. And very gently, very accurately, apply glue to the three tabs. I'm just gonna spread those around with my fingers, like so, and then we'll close it up, just like that. And there's really no way to press down on the inside since it's all self-contained and closed up. So we're just gonna press and hold that down on your surface, let that glue do its thing. Then we're gonna take this and glue it to the top of that structure. Okay, and then to finish this up, I'm gonna apply some glue to the top of our, the main part of our lamp. We'll spread that glue out to the very edges. You can put that down on your surface. And then take this little pyramid piece and just make sure you get it nice and centered and press and hold that down. I'd recommend just kind of holding it in your fingers here for a few extra seconds just to make sure that it gets a good hold. And then just kind of very gently give it a little bit of pressure and that's going to prevent any sort of gap from being maybe too prominent. Okay, and then ultimately what you're gonna do is I'm gonna take this little dowel here, uh, cut it to size, um, I would say, let's see here, we're probably going to make it about, I don't know, probably about an inch and a half. I may play with it a little bit, but I think an inch and a half would be uh, appropriate. And then we'll literally just hot glue it to the bottom of this and we'll stick it right into our base. Uh, I'm going to paint the dowel black so that everything kind of blends nicely. And then who knows, maybe paint a little bit of snow right on this little cap part. So anyway, there's three sizes of windows, okay? Um, this is one size here, and there's a total of eight of those, okay? There are, well, I guess there's more than that. There's two of these, okay? These are identical. Both of these pieces are identical. And then this window looks very similar to this one, but it is a little bit shorter, okay? And then, of course, we have these windows that don't have any shutters, okay? So anyway, the idea here is you're gonna have a piece like this. You're gonna have uh, well, 10, you're gonna have 15 actually, uh, windows with little shutters connected to them. And you'll wanna find the corresponding pieces, the overlays that go on top of them. And I would just do this kind of in an assembly line and just get all of them done because you want them to be fully set, especially if you're going glitter on glitter like I am. Just find the corresponding pieces, put some glue on the back of each of these overlays, get them affixed to the main part of the window like this. And again, since we're going glitter on glitter, uh, this probably would have added a good 20 minutes to the video. So I did it off camera. Um, I had a few of these on, which house was it? The Adams house I think had a few maybe, or was it the church? I don't remember. Um, the other video only had a few, so I kind of did it on camera, but this one, this would have been very tedious and time consuming. So again, you're going to go through and all the windows, all the, in my case, gold windows, the main frame of the window that has the little shutters, you're going to go through and put these overlays on there to make them two, uh, dual toned. Okay. This pink and gold looks really nice together. And I am... Um, Mr. Gluey Fingers today. I noticed I was counting in my head. It's about 10 seconds for it to get a good hold. So, okay. 
So that's how it's going to look when you're done. You're going to repeat that for all the windows that have shutters. Okay, and then I will just kind of go through here. Uh, this part right here is an extruded part of the front of the house. Um, there's, n you know, there's no windows or anything like that. This, uh, this part here looks like these windows here, um, but it's obviously the largest one. So you're going to put that and this little circle on this little piece. Okay, this is part of the dormer window. This is the smallest window. And that's just going to go on there. It doesn't have anything else. Okay, then we have the main part of the house that's extruded. Okay, and those do not have any shutters either. And there's four windows that are exactly the same size. And then there's one circular one up at the top. So you're going to want to get all those glued into place. Okay. And I have been going a little bit heavier with the glue since I'm going glitter on glitter. Okay. I feel like if I don't, it just doesn't really hold. And I'm just doing a count to 10. And... Um, that usually is enough, but what you can do after you get all these affixed, you can actually just pop them underneath your mat and let your mat do the rest of the work, holding them in place. If you have a couple books that you want to put on these too, uh, underneath the mat to get some added pressure, you can do that as well. Okay, but that's what this piece is going to look like. And then we'll move over here. Okay, and once you have these windows with the shutters uh, on there, I do want you to put them on this before it is actually affixed to the house just because there are so many and if it's on your surface you have better odds of actually getting it to stay completely flush and flat so i'm putting just this one down here you're going to repeat this process seven more times on both of these okay because these are identical and again it's about 10 seconds for each one. I guess it depends on your glue, depends on your conditions. It's very humid here in Chicago or near Chicago. And I feel like there's so much moisture in the air that things are taking a little bit longer to really take. Oh, see, look at that. <laughs> and that that is mostly because I have sticky fingers right now. And the sticky on my finger just was enough to lift it up. Okay, but that's gonna be okay. There's still glue on there. Okay, so we've got this one done. And then of course, we gotta do the same thing here. And again, this window is a little bit smaller. Just wanna match them up, no big deal. And don't get it confused with the one that is smaller, but shorter, because again, that is gonna go on this piece, okay? Okay, so it does match up, but um, it doesn't work properly. So yeah, the taller one is gonna go here. Yep, and this one, this one takes the smaller one. Okay, so on this piece, you want the smaller one. This is the smallest one. Okay, so let's get these affixed. Then we can get on to working on the actual structure. Okay, so as I mentioned, of the shorter windows, this is the middle-sized one. The super short one is going to go on this piece that looks like this. Okay, you might not be using the same color, but the shape is going to be the same. Okay, so let's get that one in place, and then we can start getting the brass tacks and really getting this thing going here. Okay. All right, just line that up as accurately as you can and press and hold. Of course, you can see there, I got some sticky fingers. Okay, so about 10 seconds, I'd say. In the meantime, um, we have, what do we have here? We have some things that we need to put together. And I'm thinking that this one might actually be well, I think the church is going to be the most involved. This one is probably the second most involved, and it's okay. We're going to get it all done here. Okay. All right, next, we're going to get rid of some more small pieces, and we're going to lay these out and apply our vellum over the windows. Okay, these are our main structural pieces. And let's grab our vellum. 
Okay, so mostly self-explanatory. You can see that we're trying to speed things up for you by instead of, you know, five separate vellum pieces, we just got one piece, okay? This little guy is gonna go over this window here. And then we have one more, and that's gonna go on the front structure here. Okay, that's gonna cover this little door and that little guy. And we should have one small one for the dormer window, if I can find it. All right, so that piece of vellum, one at hide and seek can't find them but you know what's cool about vellum and because of the way things are situated here it doesn't need to be cut exactly because no one's going to see it so i just literally took some scissors and i made my own okay but let's get the vellum in place on the other pieces that i do have okay make sure none of that bleeds over into the cutout areas and Do a little bit there. I just noticed that. And one little piece here that didn't pop off the mat. Make sure I clean that up. Okay, and then of course, just make sure that you have the areas with the windows covered with the vellum, like so. Okay, we'll go over here. This is the one that I cut by hand. You can see how great I am at cutting things by hand. That's why I have a machine. If I had to do this by hand, it would be a disaster. Although, I'm sure if I took my time, I could make it pretty good. But I don't think I'll ever be as good as a, as a machine. Okay, so that one's there. Moving on over here. We have a very small little area here at the bottom. This is probably a door of some sort. Okay. What you want to make sure you don't do is put the vellum below the score mark so it doesn't prevent it from folding properly. I'll avoid doing that. Okay, so that's what that should look like. We've got a few more here. We've got this little guy. I'm just going around the perimeter, trying to stay away from getting too close to the windows because when I press down on that vellum, it is going to spread that glue out and I don't want it to end up within the actual cutout section or the area. Okay, there we go. And that just leaves one more little guy here. It's actually a big guy. Okay, I'll just work around the perimeter and give it a little dipsy do inside there. Keep it within the area of the score marks. I think even if you got it on the score mark, I don't think it would really mess it up too much, but try to avoid that. Okay, so next, um, there's a few sections here. Actually, I think there's only two sections of this, and they're not even numbered, because they don't need to be. Okay, this is, we're gonna call this an extrusion. Okay, so let's actually put this little extrusion part together. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start up here at the top, and we're gonna apply glue to this tab here. I'm gonna spread that out nice and thin. Actually, I didn't get enough there. Spread that out, and we'll take this part here and line that up. We're basically kind of creating the pitch of a roof here. It's actually exactly what we're doing. Just like that. Okay, and then we have these little triangular tabs here, one on each side. Put a little bit of glue on that and then connect that right there. Make sure it's nice and even. And just press and hold that while it sets, just like that. We'll go over to the other side. Same thing, one little tab there. And fold that, tuck that right behind this piece. And just press and hold that, let that set. There we go. Okay. And these little guys here, um, those are going to be part of the base, actually, I believe. Let me double check here. Yeah. I'm going to use those to create the base, so we don't need to do anything with those bottom tabs. just want to kind of get things ready. Okay. Next, we have this little extrusion. I'm going to do the same thing. Start at the top here. 
throw a little bit of glue right on that triangular tab, like so. And then we'll tuck that right behind and under this other section on the other side. Make sure it's nice and aligned. And press and hold. Just hold that in place. There we go. And then just like we did on the larger extrusion, we have little triangular tabs just below the roof line. Pop that right behind and press and hold that in place. Okay. And we'll go over to the other one. Just throw a little dot of glue on that. Tuck that behind. A little slope part of the roof. Press and hold. And again, this bottom, these bottom tabs, we're not doing anything with those yet. Those are going to help us kind of form the base when we use our little skeleton piece, which I will explain in just a little bit. Uh, this little guy here, this is our roof, okay? And all we need to do with this is apply glue to the tab on the one side. And there's tabs on the bottom and top of this. Uh, the bottom ones are going to be used to anchor this to the actual structure. I'm going to take and grab the other end. You can actually do this flat. This should be symmetrical. So just pop that tab right in the center there, grab the other side, press it down into place, and it is it's a symmetrical piece. Sometimes you gotta give it a little nudge though. Okay, you can pop it out. These tabs here, we're gonna leave these alone. Again, these are gonna be used to anchor the structure to the house, but the top we can close up. So flip these tabs down a little bit, and let's apply our glue. And let's spread that glue around. Make sure I've got every single inch of that little tab covered with glue. And we'll close it up. Focus on getting it aligned here, the side closest to you. Get it nice and centered. If you need to kind of push and nudge the walls in a little bit on the sides, that's totally normal. I'll flip it over and use a little dowel or a pencil, whatever, just to kind of push the rest of those tabs in place. And we have the chimney structure. I don't know if I called it a roof. Okay, finally, as far as assembly goes on dimensional things, we have the dormer window. And this is pretty straightforward as well. Okay, what we're going to do is this, you can see it's right side up. On this side here, on the right side, there's a little triangular tab. We're going to apply some glue to that. Spread that out. We're going to bring it in, tuck it behind the neighboring piece that is pretty much exactly the same, minus the fact that it doesn't have that little tab. And we're going to form the little roof above the dormer window. Okay, perfect. And then, all that's left here are these two little sections. It's just this little triangular tab here. Just throw a little bit of glue on that. Bling, bling. Bring this over and press that right into place and hold. The rest of the tabs are going to be used for anchoring purposes, so we don't actually need to do anything else with them. I'll flip it over to the other side, the other triangular tab, apply your glue there, bring this over, line it up, and press and hold. There we go. Okay, so the structure of the dormer is pretty much done. Okay. All right, so most of the dimensional stuff is done. This is actually going faster than I anticipated. Okay, so next, we're gonna take these two main sections, okay, and we're gonna, we're gonna glue them together, make it one solid piece, and it may be helpful just to kind of flatten this out. I was pre-folding all of my little tabs here just to kind of keep things flowing, but uh, on this side here, we've got one large tab here, We'll go ahead and apply our glue. I love this color. I forget what color this is. I think it's, uh, boy, I don't remember. Cascade, maybe? Great color. It might be retired. I don't know. Anyway, bring this piece over. Oh, don't forget to fold these down here. We need these straight lines to guide us. These horizontal lines there at the bottom are a great focal point to kind of stare at to make sure that you've got everything aligned correctly. Okay, so that's how that should look. 
We'll join that together. I always like to flip this over onto itself just to check my alignment. Make sure nothing's sticking out on either side. Okay, that looks good. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over here now and we're gonna put glue on this side. It's a little flimsy, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Let me move it like this. Bring this out of the way. We'll apply glue to this section here. This tab. I might have caked that on there a little bit too much. I don't know, my glue bottle just decided that it was gonna start really letting loose. Okay, we can put that down flat. Grab the other end. And that should that should meet perfectly. If that's confusing, all I'm doing is just connecting these two ends. Okay, you can actually stick your hand in there. Make sure it's all nice and lined up. This horizontal score mark should match up with the one on the other side, but I do like to do this flat. It's almost like a box card. If it folds flat and it sits flat, you know that you've got it lined up correctly because of the rules and laws of symmetry. Okay, and then you can also use your surface to really push down. It really helps. Okay, there we go. Wunderbar. Okay, so there's the beginning of our structure here. All right, let me make sure I've got everything folded. And what we want to do, just to kind of give this thing some legs, uh, well, actually, we're not quite ready to do that yet. We will be soon. We need to actually install the little extrusions. Okay, so I'm going to start with the small one. Okay, and you can see the little tabs that are poking out of the main structure. That's going to go right on there, and we're just going to glue those tabs right to the inside of the surface. Okay, so I'm going to start by anchoring it here, and I guess we could do both of these tabs. We can at least try. Okay, and the idea here is just to make sure that those tabs go in there. I'm trying to figure out, this might be the best way to do it. I'll show you on the inside what it looks like after I actually get it in there. I think it'd probably be easier just to do one tab at a time, just to ensure that they are getting a good hold. Okay, I'm kind of doing two at a time here, which is working. It's okay. There we go. And I'm also kind of pushing this up against this surface as much as I can so everything is nice and flush. Okay, so let me see if I can show you what that looks like. Okay, so these two tabs here, that one there and that one there, are now glued to the inside of this piece, which leaves, we have two tabs left here. There's this one here and this one here. Okay, I'm gonna wiggle them around so you can see. There's that one and that one. We're gonna put glue on this surface like so, and I'll use a dowel here. Then we're gonna take and press and push it up against the inside of the extruded part. Okay, so it's going on the inside of this. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do this from the outside as I push the tab in place. I just wanna make sure that everything looks nice and centered and also flush with this surface. Okay, did I get, I thought I got a bunch of glue on there or something, but I didn't. Okay. It's kind of wobbly. It's okay. Don't worry about it. All right. So let me show you here. Okay. So you can see this tab here still needs to be glued down, but this one, watch my hand. You can see that tab there glued to the inside part of that extruded part. So now the last little section here, this is the last tab for this extruded part, I'm putting some glue on it. And I'm literally just going to take and fold it over onto the inside of this white part. But again, I'm gonna look at it from the outside just to make sure that everything is nice and lined up. There we go. We have a little room for error here because the little roof piece that we created for this, it's gonna kinda of hang down a little bit past everything. It's gonna hide 
any little imperfections. So don't don't go nuts. Don't uh, you know? And actually, you know what we could technically do? It just occurred to me. <clears throat> yeah, why don't we do this? This might make it easier to glue the other extruded part down. Let's get this roof glued into place, at least the main structure. We're gonna apply glue here and here. We're gonna close that up, okay? Okay, so we're gonna close up the roof just to make this thing a little more sturdy for when we uh, put this other extrusion in place. So uh, on this side here, we're gonna apply glue to these two tabs Okay, this one here, as well as this one. And I'm gonna spread that out, like so. And spread that out, like so. And then just do one side at a time. We'll bring this up. Just make sure it's all nice and flush along the side there. Get a little bit of glue that spills out, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. You can actually put this down on your surface. Press down on the rest of that tab. And then let's go over to the other side and line that up. Just however is most comfortable is how you want to do it. Okay, there we go. All right, so half of it is in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now what we're going to do is we're going to close this up here like this. And that's going to require that we put glue on these three sections here. It may seem like a lot, but it's not that bad. We'll apply the glue. There's this one little tiny little tab up at the top. Don't forget about that one. We'll apply our glue first, and then we'll apply glue on all the tabs. But then we'll, we'll kind of work one at a time, just so we don't mess anything up. I'm going to spread that glue out. This is all going to be covered up with glitter eventually, so don't worry if you make a little bit of a mess. It's not a big deal. I'm going to start over here on the left-hand side, as well as the top. You kind of want to work the top in a little bit, just right there. Okay. And then we'll go to the peak of the roof. Peak of the roof. Get that in place. There we go. Go over to the right side, pop that in place, and then don't forget about that tiny little tab up there. Make sure it's nice and straight. There we go. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, cool. All right, so now we're going to take and pull these tabs out of the front of the house like this. Okay. And this is where we're going to connect our next little extrusion. Okay, you can see how that's going to work. And I'm going to anchor the top part of this first, just to make sure that it's down all the way. Okay, so you don't need to spread the glue out here, you just need enough to hold. Let's put glue on both of these tabs. We'll probably just work one at a time. Stick them out because this, these tabs are going to get glued to the inside of this little white extrusion. Okay, so I'm kind of pushing this down as I push one of the, I'm pushing the left tab onto the inside right here. But I also want to make sure that I'm pushing it down so that it is completely right here and so that these two horizontal lines match up. Okay, so that one's good. We'll go over to the other side and we'll push that tab down up against the inside of this white structure. Just make sure that it's nice and flush with the roof. Okay, there we go. Looks good. I'll show you what that looks like inside. Okay, so you can see here's the white structure. Here are those two tabs that we just put glue on and they're up against the inside of this section there, okay? So now we have two long tabs. We can do one at a time here. I'm gonna pull this one back, 
Okay, so you can see that tab there dangling. And let's apply our glue, just a nice thin line like that. I'm going to take it and fold it over onto the inside of this wall of the white structure. Okay, so just push that up against the inside of that section. And I got a little bit of glue that kind of went all over the place. That's okay though. It's not a problem because again, we're going to be putting a bunch of glitter over this, but just make sure that this piece is flush up against the surface. Okay and just start pushing that tab up against the inside of this piece here. It's a little messy right now, but that's okay. Okay, here we go. Just like that. Perfect. All right, now let's flip this over. And that just leaves this one tab here. Let me flip it, flip it over so you can see it better. Okay, this little guy here still part of the main structure. We're going to put a little line of glue on that. You can see the glue on there. And I'll do this with a dowel. I'm going to take it and push it over onto the inside of this white structure. Okay, but again, I like to kind of look at it from the front just to make sure that I'm nice and flush up against the blue portion of my house. Just kind of pushing it against that surface as much as possible. There you go. You can see how nice and flush that is. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. And there it is. Okay, so you can take a little dowel. Just push the very corners of that down a little bit more if necessary. But I think that looks great. <clears throat> okay. Wonderful. All right, so now while we're uh, putting all these little extrusions in place, uh, let's see, should we do this now? Yeah, we could do this now. Why not? We have this little dormer window. Okay, and what you can do actually, flare all these tabs out and then literally just pop it in, pop it through this little hole here, like so. Okay, and what we're going to do is use those tabs just like we did with every single extrusion here. See if I can show you. You can see how those tabs are spread apart. I'll point to them here with the dowel. See that? Okay, we're gonna put glue on that side, on that side, we're gonna push it over and push it over all these, all five of these tabs. And I think what I'm gonna do is start with the top two. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna take and flip these in towards you. And I'm just going to apply just a little dot of glue on there. You don't need a lot, just enough to hold it. Okay, so we've got the glue on those two tabs. We're going to take and just push them up against the inside. Okay, and I'm going to do this with my hand in there while I'm looking at it from the outside, just to make sure that this dormer window is all the way up as far as it can go. And then I can just kind of give that a real quick push up against the inside. And that is what it should look like. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the bottom. I'm gonna flare that tab up. And you can see here where I'm applying my glue. It's right there. And then we're gonna take this and bring it down up against the inside. But again, I'm gonna look at it from this angle here because I wanna make sure that it's nice and straight. I'm gonna give that a press. And there you can see. And that just leaves these two little tabs on the left and right. Okay, I'll point to them. Here, sorry, that one and this one. I'll just do a dot of glue on both of these. And then just again push those over onto the side like that. I'm going to do it like this though. One, two, and one, two, just like that. Okay, so there is our little window all in place. And that just leaves the chimney. This thing's a little wonky right now, but we will fix that with our little skeleton piece. We'll get to that. I'm not quite ready for it just yet. <clears throat> okay, now the roof is going to go right on the peak of, I'm sorry, the chimney is going to go right on the peak of the roof. 
So kind of like we did before, what we can do is take this and just kind of pop it through from the inside. That should work technically. There we go. Oh, came all the way through. Don't want that. Pop it through and then we're going to spread those tabs out from the inside so they kind of grip the interior. Okay, let me just do that real quick here. Just spread those tabs out and and there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply glue just like we did with the little dormer window. We have all those tabs. We just need to glue those to the inside of the roof. And I'm going to start on the front and back. Okay, so I put glue on these two tabs here. We're going to take them and push them up against the inside. And I'm going to do that from like this because I want to make sure that I have it aligned correctly on the front and on the back. You just feel it. If you have to take a quick peek in there just to make sure you got it right, that's fine. Okay, and I'll show you the inside here. Okay, so those two tabs, this one here and that one there are now glued down to the roof. And now we have two more tabs on the left, two more tabs on the right, and those are going to go right into the little peak of the roof. And I'm just going to put glue on all four of them. Just a little dot, that's all you need. Okay, I'll spread those out a little bit just to get them going. And then just kind of feel for them. And one of the tabs is going right here. The other one's going right here. Okay, again, I want to make sure that keeping this lined up correctly. And it looks like it kind of came out of place just ever so slightly. I'm going to fix that real quick. And I'll just push the rest of those tabs up against the inside of the roof just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, I'll take a quick peek. We've got this tab here. It needs to be glued down. And then this guy here. So again, those little tabs that were connected to the chimney, those are now glued to the inside of the roof. Now this little section here kind of came apart. I'll fix that real quick. I'll just throw a little bit. Of, again, this part here, no one's ever going to see this because we're going to cover this up with glitter. So it's okay. Make a few mistakes here and there on the roof. It's not going to hurt anything at the end of the day. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So we'll take one more peek inside. And actually one of these tabs didn't quite grip. It's, it's a tight little area. It's okay though. It's, it's definitely doable. Let me get that one glued down. Okay, now I'm noticing there's a tiny little gap right at the, the peak of the roof there. And while it will be hidden, you're probably not going to see it. I just don't like it. So I'm going to clean that up real quick. Just grab a scrap piece of paper, literally just tuck it right between these two layers here. Okay, and then just press that down so it's nice and flush. I don't want that to impact the end result. I don't think it will, but you never know. You never know. Okay. All right, so all of our little extruded items are now in place. So now what we can do just to make this thing kind of hold its shape better, we have this little piece and you can see it's kind of shaped like the base. Okay, so you don't want it like this, obviously. You want it like this. This part's a little bit shorter because this extrusion doesn't go out as far. What we're going to do is we're going to pop this in here and it's going to help kind of keep this thing's shape. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with I'm going to start with the side, the longest side here, which is the back, right here. I'm going to flip this tab down, and just a nice thin amount of glue. Let's move that out of the way for a second. It's kind of wonky. It's okay. This is really going to help help get its shape. Okay, we're going to take this tab now and just glue it to this little skeleton piece. I'm going to make sure this is nice and centered. 
Okay. So that tab now is glued to that little skeleton piece. So we've got that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to this extrusion. I'm going to flip this large tab over, throw a little bit of glue on there, nice and thin. And then that's going to get glued right onto this little skeleton piece right there. And I'm going to just kind of keep my eye on it just to make sure that that little skeleton piece is nice and centered. There we go. Pop that into place. There we go. Now you can already tell that it's holding its shape a lot better. Now I'm going to go over here to this large tab on this other extrusion, do the same thing. Okay, see that there? We're going to flip that over right on top up onto the little skeleton piece. I'm pushing the skeleton piece down as far as it'll go up against this edge on the inside. Just hold that in place. There we go. All this other, all these other tabs will, these small ones I'm not too concerned about just yet. I'm going to go over here now to one of the sides. I'm going to get the long tabs done first. Take that and fold it over. You can put that down flat on your surface. Push that up against our little skeleton piece. Perfect. I'll flip it over here. Go into the long tab here. And glue that right to that piece. And now you can feel how sturdy it is. Okay, it's not going anywhere. It's like we built a little foundation for it. Okay, so now all that's left is these little tiny triangles. Throw a little glue on there. Okay, fold it over right onto the skeleton piece. Make sure that it's making good contact. Now I've got sticky fingers here, so that's not really helping. I'm going to use my surface to push that down from the other side. And I'm going to go over here to this one. Nice thin amount of glue, fold it over and press. You can also, like I said, you can use your surface here just to make sure that it's really hugging that little corner there. Okay. And we'll go over here. I'm going to do this blue one first just to make sure that's nice and centered. Press that down. Perfect. And then we'll go over here. Throw a little glue on that. Fold that over. I'm going to put that one down on my surface so I can push it down. Boy, my fingers are super sticky. Okay, that just leaves a few more. I think we could probably do these two in one shot. Fold those over and under. And take a look at it from the front. At this point, I don't even know if you can really alter the shape of it because all those other tabs have already sort of uh, set. So that just leaves this little guy here. Fold that over, press that down. There we go. Okay, beautiful. <clears throat> okay, all right, so I think that's pretty much it for the main structure here. So we can technically put the bottom of this in place if we want, just a little extra piece to keep this thing nice and solid. And you know, we're going to have to, with this, do this all in one fell swoop. So go ahead and apply your glue to the entire base here. Okay, and I'm going to take and thin that glue out and spread it out all the way around to the very edge. Little sounds you're hearing are my little social media counters. I think sometimes there's little robots or something, and you get a sound when someone dislikes or unlikes, and then you get a sound when someone likes. And for some reason, it's like someone's just sitting there unliking and then liking my Instagram account right now. <laughs> okay, so just match that up. I'm really concerned about making sure that the front is nice and level and you, you still may need to kind of nudge things around a little bit to get it to adhere to the shape correctly and that's okay. I'd much rather and I'd much prefer that this piece be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of recessed a little bit rather than sticking out. Okay. 
And again, that's going to be on the surface, so no one's really going to see that, but I did want to kind of give that a little extra support. Okay. Okay. So we're on the last leg here. Time to start putting some glitter on. We're going to do the structure first. Okay. So this is going to go like this. Okay. Maybe um, easier to, well, I think, let me see if this will work. No, we have to do all of this in one shot here. That's okay. So let's start with the face since that's kind of the most important thing. Let's get glue on all three of these sections as two of them are going to fold over onto the sides of the main extrusion here. And the cool thing is we've got all of our windows already in place. So that's going to speed things up here at the end. Okay, there we go. And just match that up with the little cutouts for the windows. Make sure it's flush with the bottom. And then press those two sides into place as well. Make sure that those are as flush as possible against the rest of the surface of the house. You can stick your hand in there too if you need to to kind of help kind of nudge that into place. There we go. And just keep holding until it gets a good grip. Everything should be nice. And you know, we can actually put that down on our surface too. There we go. Just want to have nice clean seams here throughout. Everything should be nice and flush. Okay, so that looks good. Good job there. Okay, and let's see here. Next, we've got, might as well put this one in place because it's kind of the same concept. It's going to go right there, like so. Now, maybe before we do that though, let's put this one down first. This one's going to go right here. Okay, so with this one here, because there's going to be a little bit of rubbing and resistance, I'm going to actually put glue on the surface of the house rather than putting it on that piece. Okay. And just pop a little bit of glue in this little gap here, like so, just like that. And we'll take this piece, and again, just make sure that you slide it all the way down as far as it'll go. This part might help to kind of wedge it in a little bit. Get that part over. It should be flush with the bottom, flush with the sides, and flush with this little area here kind of lifting this up a little bit to kind of create a little more separation for this to pop in. And you may need to kind of use a little dowel. Hey there, fly. Church is open. The reference to that was the that little fly that just landed on me. He was bugging me during the assembly of the church. And I said, well, just wait till the church is open, then you can go inside. And there you go. Okay, so that is that. Now we can take and put this piece on like so. And with this one, we can actually put the glue right on this surface. Okay. There we go. And don't forget about these two little side pieces here. Just like that. And just line that up with the window and that little cutout for the circle, circular, <laughs> circular window. And this little area here, you might want to take a dowel and just use that to kind of push that up against the side. There we go. That worked nicely. Nice and flush with the bottom. And it is starting to take shape. This is looking wonderful. Okay, we got two sides and a back and then a roof. And we're almost there, guys. Oh, I figured out where this piece goes. This piece goes right here. I was kind of wondering. Okay. Okay, so let's put this piece in place. And just throw a little bit of glue on this little strip. I actually thought we had an extra piece for a second. Then I looked. I was like, oh, wait a minute. That needs to go there. Okay, I'm going to pop that and push that in as far as it'll go. And press that down. There we go. I just realized that that's the front door. OK, 
Okay. Duh. That looks great. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned before, these two pieces are identical. So it doesn't matter which one we pick to put on the side here. Okay. It's going to go like that. And that looks perfect. So let's go ahead and apply our glue to this entire piece. All the way around the perimeter. There we go. And luckily, we can leave this on our surface, on our table, use that to our advantage. And then just kind of run your finger along the perimeter here. Make sure that's making good contact. Give that a push in the middle here. Make sure that's making good contact. Okay, and then we can actually put this down on our surface too and give that a push from the inside to help the center part of that make better contact as well. And don't rush this. This is the most important part. So just take your time, go around, make sure that everything is making good contact all the way around. That looks great. No gaps. We don't want any gaps. Perfect. All right, cool. And I've said perfect like a million times. I'm sorry, but I'm just really excited right now. Okay, cool. Let's go over to the other side now. Same thing, same piece, just the other side of the house. And try to get some of that glue to almost touch, if not actually touch the very edge. That's going to help you get nice clean seams. And if you're super far away, you can definitely just kind of, you know, paint that glue out to the edge. Okay. And line it up with the windows, obviously. Make sure it is nice and flush with the bottom. And then just like we did, we're just gonna kinda work our fingers around the perimeter, making sure that everything is making good contact all the way around. Now remember, we have a roof that kind of extends past the edges here. So that's going to cover up any little imperfections that we may have. So even if it's not, except for the sides here, the top here, if it's not completely gap free, not a big deal, but obviously we want to do our best work. So let's not, let's not cut corners here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, cool. All right. Now let's flip this over to the back. This is our little gateway for the light. It's going to go like this. Okay, and you'll notice there's a little bit of the cardstock still showing, and that's where we're going to put our little Velcro dot. And you do not want to put glue on the actual door, just on the areas surrounding it. Okay, so we've got just a few more pieces here. This thing is almost done. I've come a long way today. I actually made all three of these, not including the cutting. The cutting was done yesterday in preparation but I was able to get all three of them done in a day. So you guys can do it too. Okay, just match that up again, flush with the bottom, flush with the sides, do your best. Now, I've got it on the face of the house right now. The extrusions are kind of holding it up. Just be careful. Okay, you can actually put this down. I don't know, you can't. I can't get my hand in through the hole if it's on the surface, so. Just gonna have to kind of do this in the air, which is okay. Do this though. And that helps. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so Velcro dot, and that's what we use to keep the door closed. I'll just cut one of these, take the backing off of one side, and we'll put it right here where that little bit of cardstock is peeking through and peel off the other backing of the other half and then press it down. Should adhere to the glitter. There you go. And you got yourself a nice little closed door. All right, all four sides are on. Seams look pretty darn good. And now it's time to put the roof on. Okay, so you can see how this is gonna go. I'm just gonna slide this on. Just make sure it fits, and it does. Okay, that's as far as it's gonna go, which is fine. We still have a little roof. Where the heck did that go? 
Oh, no. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is still gonna go here too. That'll fill it all in nicely. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> going to start by putting glue. I'm going to put it on the front first. Okay, so you can actually put it on this entire part of the house. Okay, just kind of maybe keep it away from the edges here where... And throw a little bit right at the peak. I'll slide this over. Make sure that this, this section here with the score mark is actually making good contact with the actual peak of the roof as far as the structure is concerned. Okay, bring that down as far as it'll go. I'm just giving it a, a pretty firm but gentle push. Okay, now we can stick our hand inside to kind of help make contact throughout this whole section. I'll make sure that it's holding nicely. And worst case scenario, if we need to, we can always go in and paint a little bit of glue around these perimeter areas where the roof is making contact with the structure, just in case we need to. It may not be, may, may not be necessary, but okay, so there it is. That looks great. And now, we'll flip this up and we'll apply glue to the other half of the roof. And go right out to the edge. Okay, and bring that down. And just very easy, nice and easy. Just press that into place. Again, if you need to, you can stick your hand in there, and press up against the center of it, make sure that that gets a good hold. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so that just leaves a few additional little pieces like this one here for the roof of the main extrusion. Okay. And we want that to be flush with the structure. We want to push that back as far as it'll go as well. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and apply some glue to this structure here and this side as well. And just pop that right in place. It should fit perfectly right on there. And it should look pretty seamless as well. Might need to kind of push it a little bit. Okay, that looks fantastic. Okay. Next, we have a little overlay for our dormer window that we need to put in place. Let's start by putting glue on the face of it first, and then we'll put the little wings and glue the little wings in place next. Okay, so let's just pop this down. Be careful not to smush your roof. Okay, so match that up. Put that right on there. And just press and hold. In a few seconds, and these little guys are going to scoot right in there. And it's weird, the friction of the, the friction of the glitter is actually holding these little wings in place. But obviously, we're going we're gonna to apply some glue. We're not going to rely on that. Okay, so peel that back just a little bit and throw a little bit of glue right on this little side piece. And fold that over. If you need to use a little dowel to really push that into place, that's fine. Okay, we'll go over to the other side and peel that little wing back. I think I used a whole bottle of glue today. Okay, and there we go. Just hold that in place. We have a little roof that's going to go on that as well, like this, and that's going to go right there, just like that. So go ahead and apply some glue right there, maybe a little bit right on the peak, a little bit off to the, on the other side, grab this piece, pop it right in place, push it up against the roof as far as it'll go, and press it down. 
up against that surface and there you have it. That looks great. Okay. So now what's left here? We've got, well, we just have a chimney that we need to um, adorn with some overlays. Okay. So you can see here we have sections that are cut out, almost look like a little, uh, like a little ribbon. We'll get those glued on. It doesn't matter which one you start on, honestly. Okay. Let's see. Just put this down like this. Slide that right over the pitch of the roof or the peak of the roof. I don't know why I keep calling it the pitch. Pitch of the roof is the angle. Okay, there we go. Go this way, put the straight rectangle on next. Boy, it's like 83 degrees in here. I haven't run the air conditioning for a little while because I wanted to get this done before I close out my day. Okay, we'll do the other flat piece here, other rectangular piece. Get that in place on the back of the chimney. Okay, just like that. Okay, one more of these little ribbon pieces, and then we have a little cap that we'll put on top, and that is going to do it for this one, guys. Now, don't forget to just kind of give it a once over. If there are any little areas, oh, wait, that's not it. There's actually one more piece that we need to put in. Almost forgot, sorry. Kind of jumping the gun here. Getting hungry. Okay, so there's that glitter piece for the roof, for the chimney, I should say. Now my brain's starting to go. Okay, throw a little glue here at the top. And that's where this piece is gonna go, right in there. Like so. There we go. Okay. And then we have this little guy here for the other little extrusion. Sorry, you probably can't see that. Right there. Okay, so we'll just throw a little bit of glue onto the surface. A little bit on there. Had a little bit of glue that ended up on my my glitter. That's okay. And just match it up with the little score mark. Push it up against the structure as far back as it'll go. That glue will dry clear. It'll be fine. I'm not concerned about it. Okay, there you have it. Beautiful. And then while we're at it here, we can get these little shutters out a little bit more, create some additional dimension to the piece. And then last but not least, we do need to glue this onto the actual base. And also don't forget, uh, I'm not gonna do it here, but the little lamp that we created earlier, um, you want to hot glue that into the little hole on your base. Okay, so that that's one last little step that you got to do. I don't think I need to show you how to do that. Okay, so you just want to match up. This is the front door here. Just match up the front door with the little walkway. And of course, make sure that it is centered. Mine was not. Give that a little nudge over. And then it's still not centered. There we go. Much better. Okay, and just kind of hold that down, let that set. And let's take a look. That looks wonderful. Okay, cool. Yep, so that's going to do it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, don't forget to put your little lamp in there. What I've been doing with all of mine is sprinkling some of that faux snow. Uh, I was at uh, Hobby Lobby the other day, and I didn't find it last year for some reason. I thought maybe they banned it or something, but. Uh, I found some at Hobby Lobby, and I'm just sprinkling it here on the little, uh, whatever the heck it's called, the little porch area of the front yard. But that's it. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and visit us on our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Also hit the little bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it, and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. That's where you'll find myself and over 43,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So thank you again for hanging out with me. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again.
Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos and please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where you'll find over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly tutorials. I'll see you in the craft room.